welcome to Nature Tastic with Henry. Today, Pensop has invited me to have a look at the different habitats and a little look at the wildlife there. I've been learning about different habitats at school, so this visit to Pensop Natural Park is a great opportunity to see some of them up close along the very landscape of the River Wensum in Norfolk. The park was created in the 1980s after gravel extraction and is recognised as an EU special area of conservation as well as having four sites of special scientific interest. Look at these cute little ducklings. Baby. Here we are at Mill Pond and we're going to have a little look at the different habitats that they have around Pensorp. Our video today is about six of the habitats from ancient woodlands to varied wetlands and also the meadow and farmland. After leaving the entrance area we are heading through the invertebrate rich gardens from the bees on the flowers to the mini beasts in the woodpiles and bark hotels. I was so busy watching this damsel fly, I didn't notice the slug until we watched it back later. As well as the habitat, here are some of the highlights of this video showing what's coming up. We're heading over to the wader scrape first. Here we are at a wader scrape which was made to attract Migrating wetland birds. Let's see what's here today. Just outside the hide was this family of barnacle geese. Aren't the goslings so cute? Scrapes are low lying, wet areas with gentle sloping edges. The water level changes throughout the year. Because they support a lot of different invertebrates, this habitat provides an important feeding area for wading birds and their chicks. The wet muddy edges are perfect for lots of wading birds such as these lapwings and oyster catchers. Because so many riverside fields have been ploughed, drained and levelled out, natural wet areas like this are rare. So these man-made scrapes are really important as they support lots of biodiversity. At Wader Scrape, we've been watching some oyster catchers, lapwings, and just now we've been watching a tern fishing. Common terns are nicknamed the sea swallows, flying gracefully with long trailing tails. They often hover before diving into the water to catch fish. They breed in colonies, but we'll find out more about that later. We'll, we watched this one for ages, swooping over the scrapes and diving down for food. Check out this little guy who just landed on me. Around the edges of this area are reed beds. They are great habitat for so many species. I spotted this warbler. We think it's a reed warbler. He was busy hunting for food down in the reeds. There were damselflies all around, like this azure damselfly. The black-headed girls were trying to catch them while they were flying. Now we're heading to one of the very special conservation projects here at Penthorpe. Quick game of hopscotch while I'm walking round. <gasps> What's that? <gasps> it's a red squirrel. At Pensop, the Pensop Conservation Trust is involved in a number of projects, including the red squirrel, which is right behind me. The red squirrel is one of the most popular mammals in Britain but it's under threat. They can have rich fox red through to very dark red fur, white undersides and long ear tufts. At Pensop, they work with the East Anglian Red Squirrel Group. They've been breeding squirrels since 1998. 
They are very agile, using their long bushy tail for balance. Red squirrels like pine forests like those found in northern Britain, which do not suit their rival, the grey squirrel. They spend most of their time in trees, where they feed on seeds, bark, roots and fungi, as well as eggs and young birds. The red squirrel is the only squirrel native to Britain. The more common grey squirrel was introduced a few hundred years ago, which was a problem for the smaller red squirrel. The greys introduced squirrel pox and also forced the reds out of their habitat. Humans have also reduced their habitat. This means their numbers have dropped from millions to only a few hundred thousands. Many of Penthorpe's baby squirrels have been released on the Isle of Anglesey as part of a release programme which has got the numbers from 40 to over 700. The River Winsome is a chalk river, a really special type of river. Let's find out some more. Here I am at the River Wenson, and it's one of the most important lowland rivers in Europe and it's known as a chalk river. So what is a chalk river? Well, there are only 200 of them in the world and 85% of them are found in south and east of England. They are a lowland river that starts by emerging from a chalk aquifer that is an underground rock that water can pass through and they are known for being crystal clear, high in minerals and under fairly consistent temperature all year round. This leads to great plant diversity supporting many invertebrates and fish species. They are under threat though with pollution, water extraction and invasive species all in addition as well as climate change. Because they've made it different levels of depth and different speeds of the water, there's all kinds of different habitats here. A quick stop for some den building on the way to see farmland that borders Penthorpe Natural Park. As well as a variety of wetland, this hive is looking over managed farmland. Humans have been farming in the UK for at least six and a half thousand years. Farmed land may not be as natural as ancient woodland, but it is important for wildlife. Wildlife evolved to thrive on farmland, but recent changes have had a devastating impact on the nature that depends on farmland. Penthorpe are showing that farmland can be managed to contribute positively to the biodiversity. Simple actions like restoring hedges, untidy field edges and farm ponds could help to rebuild the connection between farming and nature. Back to the wetland habitat now, with some time for a leapfrog. There are several wetland habitats here, and after feeding this moorhen by the pond dipping area, we are going to see something special. Now we're going to head to Crane High to have a little look at another one of their projects that Penthorpe's involved in. This is a red crowned crane from East Asia. It's one of the rarest cranes in the world, but keep watching. Huh? <gasps> Did you see that chick? Yes, they've had some chicks. Here at Penthorpe, which can only be good news, but these aren't the only crane species they have here. The Great Crane Project is hoping to 
restore a healthy population of Eurasian cranes across the UK. The Eurasian or common crane became extinct in the UK about 400 years ago and Penthrop are contributing to a project to help reintroduce them through a breeding program. The Great Crane Project has succeeded in releasing 93 Eurasian cranes. It would be amazing to see these elegant birds across the UK again. I would have stayed longer watching the cranes, but he noticed this fledgling wren inside the hide and, went, and then saw its brothers and sisters, so he moved on to not cause too much disturbance. Outside we saw this family of common shell duck. They are seriously cute chicks. They mainly live in coastal areas, feeding on small invertebrates in the mud, but have spread inland as flooded gravel pits with sandy shores and gravel banks also provide a perfect feeding ground. Shell ducks have bred here for a few years sharing this pond with some exotic birds. A flock of greater flamingo. I'm going to take the long route round to the wetland hide. This hide looks over one of the large lakes here and you can see the longhorned cattle on the grass. So why are there cattle in the park? Unlike some cattle, Longhorned cattle enjoy a highly diverse diet and because of this they are a natural way to manage the grassland areas. Where they have churned up the muddy banks they have created a perfect feeding zone for this little egret. Little egrets are becoming more common in the UK but have only been breeding here since 1996. This is a great place for bird watching, from the coots and moorhens to ducks, geese and swans, or even harder to spot, like the kingfishers, there's always something happening on the water. These geese, gulls and ducks share these islands, with some of the black-headed gulls nesting here. The ancient woodlands here was a welcome break from the hot sun. It was nice to get into the damp woodland with all its mosses, ferns and streams and ponds. Wet woodland is one of the rarest wooded habitats. A wet woodland means the soil is often seasonally wet from flooding or because they are by rivers, lakes or in fenland. This unique habitat is really valuable for wildlife, especially plants that like boggy soil and the animals that depend on them. Oh, look, a grey squirrel. They might not be as cute as a red squirrel, but they're still cool to spot in a woodland. I had to show you some more cute goslings. Wildflower meadows aren't just beautiful. They are super f habitat for loads of wildlife, as well as bees, dragonflies, damselflies and butterflies. A meadow will be teeming with small mammals. Owls bats will hunt above them and herbals will find plenty of food here. In the lake here is a turn raft. This is a floating island designed to be a good nesting place for turns, reducing the risk of egg predation and because they float, there's no risk of legs getting flooded. I really enjoyed watching this one, arranging the shells to make a nest, but it doesn't look very comfortable. Wildflower meadows have become quite rare in the UK, but we can all help by leaving a part of our gardens to go wild. We're heading back to the entrance now, leaving the meadow, but not before I've had to play in the Modelotta Holt. This is a red-headed cardinal beetle. Isn't it stunning? Oh, there it goes. These are also stunning. Avocets are part of a breeding program at Pentop in the Wader Avery and can also be seen 
in the wild at the way the scrape sometimes. This is this amazing bird was extinct in the UK but has been recovered since returning in the 1940s. A real conservation success. One last look at Mill Pond with its interesting waterfowl and then it's time to go home. I've had a lovely day exploring at Pensorp and learning about the conservation they do. And with that, bye from Nature Tastic with Henry.